trying to make money while staying healthy. This is like the quandary of the entrepreneur's life, right? You know, I think everybody's hopefully smart enough to realize health is the ultimate wealth. If I told you I'll exchange, you become a billionaire, but you're bedridden for the rest of your life. Like basically nobody would, I don't know, there's a few people that love money enough that they might take that, but you'd have to be kind of insane because money only has utility to the extent it's usable. Like money is scarce in demand resources. So at the end of the day, money is always an exchange unit, right? The most rare and scarce thing on earth would be time and energy. These are the irretrievable items of life. So there's this old saying that um, entrepreneurs spend their 20s, 30s, and 40s trying to gain wealth. And then they use their wealth in their 50s, 60s, and 70s trying to regain their youth. So there's kind of a... Uh, <laughs> there's a vicious feedback or negative kind of feedback loop in the sense that why do something to gain something and then you have to use something to gain what you lost. I see entrepreneur advice like on TikTok and stuff saying, ah, oh, if you're in your 20s, just sit there and grind and make money. That's pretty, look, you got to follow what I call biological imperative. So no matter the greatest plans of mice and men go awry as the famous book says so humans have their own time frame that they just come up with in their neocortex they're supposedly logical front part of the brain and they say well you know 20s is the time to sacrifice and not do all these things because you gain money and you gain some kind of a competitive advantage well this is kind of weak logic think about it this way in your 20s, what's the only thing you can do that's time sensitive and encapsulated, let's say, in 20 to 30? Well, that's when you're, for a man, you're going to have max testosterone, pretty much 16 to 30. So you should capture things that are irretrievable in that time frame. So if you're watching this and you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to figure out business-wise what to do, you know, how much exercise, how much gym, how much obsession should you have with things that are non-career or financial or uh, asset net worth building? You should say to yourself, well, why take my 20s, sacrifice, and then when I'm 50 and I have all the money, I'll wish I had the potential to stack on muscle like I did in my 20s and 30s. No, it's like economics, the principle of competitive advantage. Competitive advantage says you should do the things... And, and that's more in a trade environment between countries, let's say, you know, if Mexico can grow oranges and Michigan can grow apples. Uh, but theoretically, Mexico gr could grow apples, but it'd be hard. And Michigan could grow oranges, but it would be expensive. Then instead of them trying to do what they can't easily do, Mexico should grow oranges. Michigan should grow apples and they should exchange them. That's like the base principle of you know competitive advantage in modern macroeconomics well when it comes to what you should do in your 20s financially career wise entrepreneur wise in your 20s you should do only things you can do in your 20s so i would it'd be better if i could you know have a time machine be 15 years old again 15 to 30 is a time when you can achieve maximum strength. I think it was Socrates or Aristotle said, you know, it's a tragedy for a man to not realize how strong he could have been at some point in his life. It's like 15 to 30, make a little bit less money and compete in a powerlifting competition or a bodybuilding competition. Like that's your one window in life. And yes, you can stack on muscle. I mean, somewhat all the way up till you die. It gets... But it's that principle of competitive advantage. Just like Mexico theoretically can grow apples and Michigan can grow, can grow oranges in a hoop house, you know, with continual heat and with massive energy expenditure. Well, yeah, you could stack on muscle at 70, but it, it's, <laughs> it's not that feasible. So my answer to this question is respect the biological imperative. What could you only do in 15 to from 15 to 30? Do that a lot 
what can you do later in life? You can make money later in life. Now, I'm not saying, don't interpret this like you shouldn't try to make any money. Like, that's not what I'm saying, you know. But, which brings me to a different point. You know, by the way, this is, welcome to my Friday episode, my podcast slash vlog, uh, Four Pillars of the Good Life. Monday, I talk about health. Tuesday, I talk about wealth. Wednesday, I talk about love, social stuff, dating. Thursday, I talk about happiness. Then back Friday today, talking on health. Tomorrow, Saturday, back to wealth, investing, building businesses. But today's subject, you know, what is the ultimate hack for health? My answer is it's really age-dependent. The ratio of money-making activity to physical health focus. Now, obviously, you should be focused at every moment of your life on health. At, but I'm talking about an, a strong emphasis on one or the other. Now, the question then becomes, when do you focus all your time on making money? Well, you know, like I said, I, to me, life is, is ratios. So it's all the ratio of the four pillars, health, wealth, love, happiness. So it's not so matter when, it's not so much do you ever not focus on health or not focus on wealth or not focus on love and social life or not focus on happiness. It's the ratios change over time, right? So when you're, I think when, uh, yeah, when I was five years old, six years old, I tried to make a lemonade stand, sell cherry tomatoes, you know, my first little business idea, but the school system didn't support that. So there should be a wealth and business aspect ratio, even for six and seven year olds should start learning about money, right? And then, but that ratio should be smaller <laughs> or that ratio should be tighter. It should be much less on pillar number two, wealth. When you're six years old, it should be on health, social and happiness more so. So maybe it's, you know, 5% of your day. But the problem now is people think too binary. Like, should I be doing this and not this? Well, it's not like that. Stop thinking in this binary concept. You know, start thinking life is shades of gray. You know, that's, that's like the, the biggest thing that I see, especially in the United States, with politics and everything's binary. It's like, should you do this? Should you have high taxes? Or should you have you know, low tax? Should you have, how should healthcare be? It's not binary how things should be. So I don't think there should ever be a time where you're neglecting one of the four pillars of the good life after say age six or seven, all the way till you die. But certainly I think career should be a, a ramp up. And the beauty is now the younger you start, it, has, it doesn't have to be so drastic. So if you start a business at 13 and you stick with it, you're not gonna have to have so many hours devoted to that at age 30 and 40. So you can keep the ratios even. And I think in an ideal life, if you're awake, let's say 16 hours a day, roughly, you should spend four hours on health. Okay, that doesn't mean in the gym four hours, but I'm including eating meals slowly, walking, gym, four hours where you're focused on physical health, four hours a day on work, not the four hour work week, four hour a day. And I think that, you know, you can accomplish a lot in four hours. Carnegie was almost as wealth, wealthy as Rockefeller. He said he'd only work two, three hours a day and he made 400 billion in today's dollars. So if you start and build the foundation right, you know, you may not become the wealthiest person, but four hours a day for an entrepreneur on a slow ramp up to building a business and a brand is possible. And then you spend four hours a day, social love with family, with friends, dating, or if you're with the partner, you know, spouse, whatever, kids. And then four hours a day on happiness, which is all that like esoteric things which can be like, if you like music, you're playing a musical instrument, brings you happiness. If you like nature, you know, if you like painting, if you're an inventor, if you're a writer. So I, I think that's the dream ratio of life. Now, as I said, if you're in your 15 to 30, you probably, you can ramp up the physical side and ramp down some of the other stuff. 
you know, but 15 to 30 should be doing a lot of social. Pillar two and three should be crazy. Uh, sorry, pillar one and three should be the highest age 15 to let's say 30. I'm just picking somewhat arbitrary times, but you know, 15 to 30, what are you doing? So you're spending a disproportionate amount of time in the gym. Like that's when you, my dad was a pro bodybuilder. You can work out twice a day. <laughs> you really want to stack our muscle, be in shape, or you can play sports in the morning for three hours and then hit the gym for two, three hours or combination therein, you know? I'm not necessarily saying six hours is the number. I'm just kind of exaggerating to make a point. And you should spend a hell of a lot of time, you know, the ultimate physical purpose of life, if you talk to an evolutionary scientist like Dr. Buss, is mating. So you should be finding who you're going to mate with, have kids, you know, forget marriage for a second. I'm not saying you should have kids outside of marriage or not. I'm saying the context, the true context of romance as a, as a biological function has more to do with having children than it has to do with quote unquote Romeo and Juliet love. Like the brain activates the mating by making us feel love, but the intrinsic pers purpose of those, that hormonal flush that you feel in your brain is to have kids. So like age 15 to 30, you know, you should be thinking about how do I find the kind of person I want? Where should I live? That's a huge thing. Where should you live in this world? Like people forget, like you pick the right place. You should be living in the right place. And that has a huge effect on your social life. So you can be moving, living different places in the world. And then career wise on the wealth side, you should be testing a lot of stuff between age 15 and 30. Spend six months you know, three to six months trying 10 different careers between 15 and 30 and then hunker down. You know, my mentor out nation used to say, hey, Ty, look, in your 20s, you wonder what you should do. In your 30s, you start doing it. In your 40s, uh, it starts to become profitable. In your 50s, you build true wealth. And in your 60s, you become a mentor to those at the beginning of the cycle. Now, you may or may not agree with his exact time frame, but there's a certain logic. Maybe it doesn't take 10 years, but that is the logic. A natural progression would be a spend, wonder what you should do. So you don't have such strong beliefs. Like Nietzsche said, the enemy of the truth. Uh, convictions are greater enemies of the truth than lies. So don't have such a strong conviction when you start. Maybe you're starting at 13 or whatever, 23, but there's a stage of exploration where you don't have strong convictions about your career. You know, and in the 30s, and then the next stage is when you really pick something, hunker down on it, and then it takes 10 to 20 years to really become valuable. Some people, they can do it in 20 months. Some people take 50 years, but on an average mean, it's 10 to 20 years. The average person takes who creates real wealth, you know? So look at the people on the Forbes list. Most of them, it was 20 solid years before they got to the pinnacle. So when it comes to health, you know, you're doing your health in parallel because the whole, my whole four pillar system, you should go to tylopez.com slash four pillars podcast, the number four pillars podcast. It'll take you right to my four pillar, pillar system where I share like, this is kind of my unique I don't know if it's unique, but this is what I've been trying to share with the world for many years is like, you need this four pillar approach. And I've never seen, I wish I would have been taught to me, you know, it's kind of going back to Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, you know, the arithmetic mean is the best. That was kind of the Aristotelian mean. This concept of life is not a thing. It's a balancing of things. You are perfect. It's like you're juggling right? It's not just one ball making money or your health or your love life or happiness. It's all four. And those need to be juggled in the correct ratio because if you throw one up too high or too low, overemphasize one, it throws the whole four off. So health is a age-based biological imperative, uh, biologically slash imperatively kind of commanded um, life cycle. You should, if you're watching this and you're 15 to 30, you should be 
doing things you'll only be able to do hormonally easily from 15 to 30. And when you're, and in your wealth, you go, well, well, what time can I make money? Well, you can make money 15 to 30, but you can, but you can also make money 45 to 60 or 30 to 45 or whatever. So you go, well, but I can only get health now. So, and you, you, you don't want to find a mate at 75 years old if you want to have children. Again, the purpose of, I don't use the word romance or dating or love or whatever. I mean, you can use that too, but I like mating. Mating, by the way, I'm walking my 10, 15,000 steps. Some people think that's the number. Some people say no. You know, I interviewed Dave Asprey from Bulletproof uh, yesterday. He, he doesn't, he thinks that 10,000 steps is bullshit. I was talking with a guy I've learned a lot from, Grego Gallagher, Kino Body. He's a big fan of 10 thousand steps if you study hunter gatherers they were walking about 15,000 the men the women a tad bit less than the men the Amish I lived with the Amish you know the Amish they find now walk what was their number I think it was 18,000 a day on a farm but anyway I like to walk even who knows what the exact number is but knock out these podcasts daily so make sure by the way subscribe to my YouTube channel or whatever you're watching, my, my iTunes, my Spotify, Facebook, Insta. I'm going to be putting out things like this. I think I, I know it would have added value when I was, <laughs> you know, before I knew these. I wish somebody had told me some of the things that I learn now. I'm like, man, how come this isn't just like standard operating procedure? What What is school for? What is childhood and parents for? They're really for this stuff, but, you know, maybe you're like me. Grew up with a single mom for the start of my life. You know, my dad was in prison, so there's extenuating circumstances, and I had to go learn it from surrogate parents or surrogate father mentors, you know. So this is these episodes are the kind of the amalgamation of what I've learned. And you know, some people don't like my style. I'm a more of a meandering, wandering, eclectic kind of person. So if you want a straight line, here's the three steps to getting your health. I've got videos like that, but these kind of daily vlogs are just more like my meandering thoughts. And if they add some value, great. If not, eh, there's a trillion influencers nowadays. Nowadays, <laughs> it's getting to a point when it's like, what will the ratio to influencers to listeners be? It'll be one to one. It'll be four billion influencers in the world and four billion listeners. Everybody gets one follower listening to them. Anyway, so, yeah. I know I didn't totally answer what the best workout is and diet. So maybe I'll answer that now. So for me, what I think as an entrepreneur, and let's just forget the age-based thing. I think the first two hours of the day and about five hours after you, after you wake up are the most important. So the first two hours, you wake up. I'm trying to get a lot of water in. I think it's important not to drink too much water after about six hours before you go to bed. Because then you wake up, you know, and you're messing up your deep sleep, your REM and all that. Your restfulness ratios are getting out of whack. So for me, key is first two hours, I do things in 18-minute sprints. If you go to tylopez.com slash million dollar, uh, million body podcast it'll redirect you to my whole system tylopez.com slash million body podcast but you know i've got a routine every 18 minutes things i'm doing hot hit getting a hot cold shower um even in skincare is important i think hair care coconut oil it's getting windy um getting out doing cardio i've got a cycle based on the time of the year like if it's spring, spring, fall, <clears throat> summer, winter, I do different things. I think you should change your body type in the sense that you should be bulkier sometimes of the year, then cut back uh, and be super lean sometimes a year, maintenance some of the year. So doing some intermittent fasting, heavier during the cutting season, bulking season, I'm massively reducing cardio, hitting the gym a lot, eating more often. Um, you know, if you based on hunter gatherers, if you're looking at the winter cycles, you're sleeping, uh, you know, 
later in the summer because it's light for longer, so you're sleeping later into the day. But winter time, you're getting more hours of sleep. Um, I think you should vary up your diet cyclically. Hunter gatherers were eating 43% meat, 57% things that they gathered. So that'd be berries, various plants, nuts, and so on, tubers. So I guess what I'm saying is like these first two hours, I like when I wake up, wake up ideally one to four hours after, uh, one hour before sunset to four hours after when they've done studies on the Hadzas, you know, the, the Ashe tribes in Brazil, these primitive, I hate to use the word primitive, but let's just call it non-industrial hunter-gatherers. And so these first two hours is like, a, you gotta hit it hard as an entrepreneur. Then you got, you know, three hours to do work. And then I hit the gym and or sports, depending on the cycle. If I'm trying to get super lean, I'm doing four days. Uh, a week of sports and cardio, two days a week at the gym. If I'm trying to bulk, I'm doing, you know, five days of weights and, uh, or four days of weight, sorry, and two days of cardio. So there's kind of, I like that bi, bimodal workout routine when you're an entrepreneur. It, do some stuff in the first two hours and then do stuff about five hours. Five hours after you wake up, you're at your peak strength. So I like to do, if you're doing weights or, and stuff and of course this varies there's there's chronotypes varying for people who are if you're a night owl you know they call them larks or owls and all this some interesting studies on why humans are bimodal in terms of night owls versus not night owls there's variance in the population so you should know yourself but i like two different workout times a day it keeps you active i like to treadmill desk you know i don't like to sit i think if you're going to read lay down on the couch or in bed Sitting is a pretty weird position for humans. For men, it messes up your prostate, messes up low back. It's not really a natural state, you know. Squatting, that's what you see a lot in Southeast Asia. Um, or laying down, you see a lot like the hunter-gatherers, like the Hadzas, or the Hunzas in India, things like that. So anyway, there's so much to talk about. I, I think the most important part of this, today's episode was more about understanding the biological imperative. There are times when your ratio should be, your life should be really about physical health over wealth. And then there's times where you still, of course, focus on staying healthy, but you push up the amount of wealth focus that you're on, you know? So I don't think it's a binary straight line answer, if that makes sense. Anyway, leave a comment. Give me something controversial. What did you hate that I said? Leave a comment below. What'd you hate about this? And what do you totally agree? Give me a good cop, bad cop. What's your good cop reply to this? And bad cop, let's start a dialogue. Debating is healthy, you know? Intelligent debate, so talk soon.